Uh, my eye is beginning to swell shut. If two plus two is four, and five plus five is ten, then what the fuck is this? Please call for help. Welcome back to the channel. Okay. Oh, yes, the rumors you've heard are true. I have been stricken by disease. <laughs> I tested positive for COVID-19 a few days ago. I feel pretty shitty and awful and horrible, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about some fucking books or some shit, I don't know. No, um, here, okay, here's what's going on. I just finished school and I really just want to read shit that is just purely entertainment. Mind-numbing bullshit. And when I think of mind-numbing bullshit-ass books, I think of internet, like TikTok books. So I picked four authors that are the first book is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Whenever I think of book talk, I think of this book. Basically what it's about is Addie LaRue who makes a deal with like some dark god type shit to kind of like live forever, but I think he ends up like twisting her words. She ends up living forever, but nobody remembers her. The next book I'm gonna read is more like hardcore fantasy and it's six of Crows by Shay Bardugum. Bar what? Lay Bardugo. This is about a heist, and I feel like it's gonna be very fast paced, a few twists and turns, and um, just overall really enjoyable, which is something that I need. The next one is Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. Sally Rooney. I read Normal People and I did not like it. I really did not enjoy that book. Marianne and Connell, I just thought were whiny and annoying and needed to shut the hell up. So I'm gonna give her another go with Conversations with Friends. I believe this is her debut, but it's about Frances, a young woman vaguely pursuing a career in writing while studying in Dublin. <laughs> her best friend is the beautiful and endlessly self-possessed Bobby. At a local poetry performance one night, they meet a well-known photographer and as the girls are then gradually drawn to her world. Frances is reluctantly impressed by the older woman's sophisticated home and handsome husband Nick. But however amusing Francis and Nick's flirtation seems at first, it begins to give way to a strange and then painful intimacy. Okay, this does sound good. This sounds better than normal people. I'm not gonna get my hopes up. And then the last book is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I mean, I feel like that book and Colleen Hoover are right up there on TikTok with V.E. Schwab and The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I don't own it because I'm gonna read it on audiobook. You know, I don't read a whole lot of romance because... <laughs> I'm a boy, <laughs> but I'm going to kind of, I guess, <laughs> Harry Styles the fuck out of this shit and break some gender norms and read this romance book for this video. I'm kidding, obviously. I feel like the romances that I have read are like classics, like Pride and Prejudice, Emma, and those I really enjoy. But contemporary romance, I just feel like is always so incredibly tropey and the same. You read one, you've kind of read them all, but who knows? Maybe It Ends With Us will completely change my mind. But It Ends With Us is about some like redhead girl who, I think she like owns a flower shop, meets a guy, I'm trying to remember, a homeless? I thought there was like a pregnancy maybe? I don't know. Isn't there like incest in it or something? I don't, that, I don't think so, but maybe. Okay, I've got quite a bit of reading to do. I'll talk to you later. I think a bird just flew into my window. It's a few days later and I completed reading The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I liked it. I thought, definitely, I thought it was fun. I liked the beat. I think it could have benefited with a bit more editing because it just dragged on a little bit. And the ending, I, I hate, hate, hate. Hey! It just didn't make any sense and it was so just out of nowhere. And I find it kind of weird that this is like a TikTok book because I feel like TikTok books are supposed to be very fast paced and this definitely was not. It was fun. And then I also finished listening to the audiobook for It Ends With Us. It ended up being about domestic violence. And I think that the stuff about domestic violence was really good. But it was weird because it also was written like your basic 2022 romance. So <laughs> it was a strange mix of like 
<laughs> it was very like fiance core. Like, I gotta get married now. And I gotta have kids. <laughs> but then it was also mixed with like really brutal stuff like domestic violence, sexual assault, a baby getting shot to death. <laughs> It was kind of like if A Little Life and Friends had a baby. <laughs> Overall, it was good. And now I have started conversations with friends. I don't want to say anything definite right now. I'm like nearly halfway through so far. I'm actually really liking it. I do want to say that I started watching the Normal People show though. I'm like obsessed with the show. Like the show is so fucking good. So I think that that might have something to do with me liking this one a lot more because I feel like I understand Sally Rooney now. I feel like reading normal people, I really didn't get it. I just didn't understand what Sally Rooney's deal was. But I think that watching the show, I get it now. And I think that with this understanding, reading this, I'm a bit more like, okay, but damn, I'm. <laughs> uh, that show is crazy. Like, they're so naked in it all the time. It's I don't like it because they're naked in it. I li I... Okay, James. And then I also am going to add a book into this. We Were Liars. Because I feel like this is like a quintessential TikTok book. <laughs> I've been crushed. <laughs> okay. So, my head is swollen. I have a little bit of an infection. Um, I finished two of the books. We Were Liars and Conversations with Friends. Let's just start with We Were Liars. Um, no. This was bad. I liked the setting. I think it was like Martha's Vineyard. It was like rich white kids going to like their private island where they vacation every summer. I'm just chilling in Cedar Rapids. One of the girls gets injured one summer and ends up having amnesia. And right away, the only place where amnesia is appropriate is in 51st states. I just, I don't believe it's real. Like it's, you're just doing too much. I don't know, whenever I see it in like a story or something, I'm always just like, you're lying. And the ending, <laughs> not to give too much away, this is like kind of a spoiler, but it was giving the sixth sense. At first I was like, are you fucking kidding me? This is the big surprise, this is the big twist. And then I remembered, oh, this is like YA. The people that probably loved this were probably like 15 year olds. They probably read this and it was their first time seeing some icy dead people shit. And they were like, oh fuck. <laughs> but to me, it's just lazy and just boring. Whatever, don't give a shit about this. Don't read this unless you're like 14. <laughs> Conversation I feel like I understand Sally Rooney now, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I will say though, I liked this book. I unequivocally liked it. While I was also reading this, I started watching Normal People, the show, and I finished it so quickly. That show is fucking crack. Wow, that was so powerful. <laughs> Academy Award. <laughs> what did they put in it? What did they put in it? <laughs> and I feel like it made me understand who Marianne and Connell were because in the book, I think I said before, I didn't know what their deal was. They were just annoying to me and very unrealistic. But the show, I feel like humanizes them and actually gives them motive. But this book, compared to normal people, I just thought was so much more interesting. The dynamic, I mean, a, a quadruple, what is it? What would that be, like a love square? I just thought it was good. And the universe that she's created with these books, I think is very similar <laughs> to the MCU in the way that, you know, the MCU is set in the real world, but there's one thing that sets it apart from reality and it's that there's superheroes. I think that the universe Sally Rooney has created is very similar in that, in that it's set in the real world, but instead of there being superheroes, everybody is a Marxist, bisexual, neurotic as hell, and... <laughs> intolerable to be around. It's such a trip. Like, it's such a strange experience reading this book because it's just like, this is the world I live in, but something, something's askew. But yeah, I liked it a lot. I like the dynamics. I like the characters. I understand why you would love this if you love this. 
the fuck? So it's a few days later, the swelling has gone down, as you can see. Black, hot, and sexy, and beautiful. I do have this band-aid on because this... <laughs> I think I didn't mention before because maybe I was a little bit embarrassed, but the swelling did feature a blister or something because I had like a cloister of lesions on my face and it has completely scabbed over as you can see here there's one little guy there that is not covered up by the bandaid he's poking out saying hi <laughs> Hi. The band-aid is just so that I don't pick at the scabs because that's all I want to do is pick at the scabs. Did you ever eat your scabs when you were a kid? I didn't, but I've heard other kids did used to eat their scabs. Um... <laughs> Holy fucking shit. This was actually so good. It reminded me of, do you know from like 2012 to probably like 2016 there was this insurgence of YA dystopian fantasy series that were being written and then turned into movies like The Hunger Games, Divergent, The Maze Runner and those were the books that kind of got me into reading and I missed that era and I thought that that era was like completely done but I was wrong because this gives me strong like Hunger Games, Divergent, the Maze Runner vibes and it's so nice to see and it was just so good all the characters and the plot the suspense the world building was wild and I would have loved to see how much further Leia Bardigi could have taken it if she didn't write it as a YA because I feel like she kind of held back a little bit but it's still really good and I'll definitely be reading the second one now that I've read these books has my opinion on internet authors changed or like tiktok books no. I still feel like they're purely just for entertainment which is awesome I wasn't really like blown away by any of them but um honestly I don't even remember what I read I really don't understand the hype around Sally Rooney still I still don't really care about reading romance We Were Liars was just that movie for preteens The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue was just kind of boring and The Six of Crows is just a fun romp and yeah thanks for watching I have a hair on my eyelash one sec maybe I can sing you out should I start doing it okay goodbye <laughs>